how about I start off by uh, introducing myself. Uh, my name is Josiah, I'm also known as Chilling Silence, and this talk is going to be about how Dandelion improves your privacy on Digibyte. So before I begin, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the following disclaimer. I'm going to be making some analogies here, and I'm going to be simplifying things significantly. Now, while I will do my best to remain as technically accurate as possible, uh, this is all done specifically so that we don't have to spend an hour here uh, explaining the many dark and deep intricacies of the Digibyte blockchain and, and how it all works. Uh, it, please also forgive me, it's 1am here in New Zealand, and I've been rather ill today, uh, so excuse me if I uh, do need to clear my throat. So, uh, let's, let's uh, get stuck straight into this. So, why do you want Dandelion? And why are we bringing it to Digibyte? So, you have Digibytes, presumably because you are here at the Digibyte Global Summit, or specifically there at the Digibyte Global Summit. Now, when you make a transaction, this is broadcast out to the whole network, and your IP address is part of the information that is included with this. Now, using some special techniques, people can track down where you are, or at least the location of the server that made the transaction with a a moderate amount of certainty at the moment. You might have a couple of Digibyte, you might have a couple of million Digibyte, but the point is you don't really want to have somebody rock up to your house and say, I know that you've got five Digibyte, so I want you to, to hand it over or I'll egg your house because nobody likes it when their house gets egged. So <laughs> I'm going to explain a little bit about how things work currently, uh, why it's not quite ideal, uh, existing or alternative solutions, and then why Digibyte is going to be using Dandelion. So, currently the Digibyte network uses the same method of broadcasting a transaction to the mempool as Bitcoin does. Now, this is known as diffusion. Let's say you are Alice, and you're wanting to send Bernard some Digibyte. Even before the transaction is included into a block, you broadcast it out to everybody on the network that you know, that you are connected to at the time. They then broadcast it out to everyone uh, that they're connected to, and, and so on and so on, filling up what's called the mempool. Uh, this is a, basically a list of pending transactions. Now, it's important that you know what the mempool is, because this is what is going to make Dandelion different. And this is why you'll also see me having uh, so many rants on Twitter about uh, Litecoin and the likes using zero-conf transactions in retail. It's just, it's not a good idea. Now, roughly every 15 seconds, the miners take all of the transactions that are in the mempool, and they put them into a block, hence why this is known as a blockchain. So one of the miners will get a reward for finding the answer to the math problem, this is known as the, the nonce, and the miner then tells everybody, okay, here's the block and here is all of the transactions in it. Now when your node or your wallet receives this block, your wallet effectively says, sweet, I've got all of these transactions in my local copy of the mempool over here, I'm going to take them out, and now we've only got a, a couple of them left, and these will presumably be included in the next block. Your wallet sounds a lot like uh, it has a, a bit of Kiwi slang as it thinks. <laughs> so now, all of this works brilliantly, except sometimes people are nosy. Sometimes people don't have your best interests at heart. Now, a nosy attacker could have a bunch of eavesdropping nodes out there at a relatively low cost to them. And imagine that this malicious person runs the nodes that you can see that are highlighted. This is all hypothetical, of course, but with enough nodes, they could uh, roughly enough work out the time difference between one of the nodes receiving the transaction in the mempool, the other receiving it, and then use some complex mathematics to find the origin, oftentimes with enough certainty that you could, you could argue that it's problematic. Now, in fact, there's actually been a whole bunch of academic research done on this, not just in Bitcoin transactions, but about data transmission in general. You see, we don't want people to be able to physically track you down and take your Digibyte. Now, this is why we are implementing Dandelion. So there are other blockchains out there, such as Verge and Minero, that have taken slightly different approaches. And so I'll, I'll briefly explain those to you now. So Minero uses the I2P protocol. Now this is good, but it requires a lot of really like, deep, deep integration into the wallet, like a lot. It's got its limitations, but overall it's actually pretty good. But it makes integrating with their wallet rather difficult. Now Verge on the other hand uses Tor, or the Onion Network, 
Now, Tor is also lightly integrated into the main Bitcoin and Digibyte core clients, but this is a more of a next level integration. And again, it can be a real pain for third party wallets or platforms integrating it. There's also other limitations to the Tor, to the Tor protocol, although that is being improved upon and, and Verge are implementing these new changes. But again, this all comes back to massive amounts of dev time, upkeep, technical debt, and other fancy words that I can spout off that will help convince you that we're doing the right thing here with Dandelion. So Digibyte is going to go with Dandelion for a bunch of reasons. Now the first is that this is 100% backwards compatible with all of the other nodes in the older versions. The older ones basically don't know any different and they're completely unaffected by this upgrade. Now Dandelion also doesn't affect the standard UTXO protocol, means that we are still perfect for digital assets and the likes. You can optionally turn this off or on depending on if you want the faster speed or if you would prefer the enhanced protection that this offers. It's also not going to give us a huge amount of technical debt and Dandelion is also not going to slow down our 15 second block time, so we're still going to be lightning fast. This also still offers good protection while tying it in with the existing Tor support inside the Digibyte Core wallet if you want. So, how does it work then? Well, Dandelion is a transaction transmission method currently implemented in about three other blockchains as far as I'm aware. We have Grin, Beam, and Zcoin. Now, there are people pushing for this to also become part of Bitcoin Core eventually as well. So Dandelion works a little differently than the traditional diffusion method of broadcasting your transaction. We'll use Alice and we'll use Bernard as an example again. So your wallet will start by making a transaction that you want to send and they will mark it as a Dandelion specific transaction. You start kind of creating a stem, sort of uh, just like the flower, uh, broadcasting your transaction to just one other individual person. Now the stem creation is effectively the privacy phase of this all. Now that one person you've sent it to, they then send it on to one other person, who then sends it on to one other person as well. And this all happens without telling anybody along the way how many hops it's already been through. This is very important because this is what helps protect the privacy of the original sender. Now if at any time your transaction comes across a non-Dandelion supporting node, as it is growing the stem, it will just simply flower and disperse the transaction immediately, just like it would traditionally. So how does Dandelion know when to stop making the stem if it doesn't know how many hops it's been on already? Each time your transaction reaches a new node, it does what is effectively a coin flip. So picture you are, you're flipping a coin and you have to get uh, tails three times in a row. On a heads flip, Dandelion will stop flipping the coin and it will continue to add to the stem. And so we can see here you'll kind of go up the stem. However, by the time you get your third tails in a row, it flowers or it fluffs the transaction and begins to broadcast it to everyone as it would with the traditional dispersion method. So by doing this and by implementing Dandelion, you very effectively reduce the ability for nosy eavesdroppers to trace the source of the transmission, keeping you and your Digibyte more secure. So this is great, but what are the downsides to this? Well, the downside is that zero confirmation transactions for Dandelion enabled uh, are going to take a little bit longer to reach the destination. Now, naturally, you don't have to use Dandelion if you're out on your cell phone and you want to pay for your coffee in a hurry. However, it means that the videos where you see your wallet sending from one wallet showing up to the other in under two seconds, that doesn't occur for Dandelion specific transactions. That it, it takes a little bit longer. However, this is a good thing because people shouldn't be trusting a zero confirmation transaction regardless. I go uh, into this a little bit in some of my Medium articles if you're curious for later reading. Uh, Dandelion also doesn't play nice with RBF, which is replaced by fee, which is the controversial Bitcoin improvement that Digibyte doesn't actually need at all, but we've kind of just inherited it from the upstream code. Now, replaced by fee was the cause of the Bitcoin ATM robberies a couple of months ago, so RBF is out as well. And let's be honest, it's really only needed for blockchains with smaller transaction processing capacities like Bitcoin or Litecoin anyway, so to be honest, we're not really going to miss it. Now, Dandelion also takes a bit of work to implement it, but thankfully our lead iOS developer, uh, Yoshi Yeager, has managed to do 90% of the implementation 
into the Digimite Core wallet pretty quickly already. Uh, I've been doing a lot of testing with he and uh, Mental Collapse and a few others to get this tidied up and ready for either another 6.17 release or the 7.17 release of Digibyte Core. Now this is progressing very nicely. So although there are a few downsides, they're not major at all. Uh, they're barely even minor. Uh, and, and, and in fact, they're, they're not really problems. So it's beneficial and it keeps uh, the users safe and it keeps them secure. That's the goal here, keeping you and your Digibyte more secure. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show a, a video. Now this is a, an even a less technical video that I've been working on with Amon Unlimited, uh, also known as the Digibyte Unlimited Network now on YouTube uh, that, that uh, Rudy mentioned earlier. So we can use this video to explain to the masses in under 60 seconds why Dandelion on Digibyte is a good thing.